What's up YouTube, Barcode here, I'm bringing you another Epic 7 video. This video is going to be specifically on uh, the Wyvern, uh, which drops a lot of good gear that you should kind of focus on as soon as possible, and that's because speed is the king of the game right now. So uh, let's get started. So I wanted to talk about, this is Wyvern 7 right now, and I'll talk about the different stages and where you should be farming and when you should be farming those etc but uh, I wanted to start with the wyvern so let's go over just the basic skills um, the first one is a tail swing and it dispels all buffs on all enemies okay uh, the second one is creates a gust of wind moving incredibly fast inflicting huge damage to all enemies and this grants immunity from having their combat readiness decreased all right so just think about that uh, the third skill is attacks with a fireball and inflicts poison for two turns. Granting an extra attack of the caster is not the buff. And what that means is the caster is the wyvern, not the caster, the, whoever he attacks, okay? That's a very important part of the mechanics of this fight, so keep that in mind. If he's attacking twice every turn, that's an issue, so just keep that in mind. Uh, the last skill is Tail Swing, so attacks all enemies and dispels all debuffs from the caster, which is itself, okay? Uh, the Wyvern, for people that are a little confused. Before receiving a barrier, a, it's a huge shield, and decreased speed for one turn. So he gets this huge barrier after doing AoE damage to you, and um, but his speed gets decreased, uh, and there's a reason why. So if the barrier isn't destroyed by his next turn, he's going to do huge AoE area of effect damage to all of your champions, all right? Um, the, this caster is not affected by buff dispels, so you can't dispel the shield or anything like that. And is granted immunity to decreased speed debuffs, um, which is like a, a lower speed, okay? Um, so you can't lower the speed of him while he's in that barrier, all right? Let's talk about, if you didn't know, you can click on the portrait of uh, your enemies and you can see like a resistance and what they're immune to. So let's talk about that. The Wyvern can't be stunned, all right? Can't be slept, can't be provoked, can't be silenced, and they are, um, he's immune to decreased combat readiness. Once he gets this uh, barrier up, he does become immune from lower speed. So you can lower the speed on him prior to the barrier. So you could bring a lower speed debuff, um, and that would be good for the normal turns. So that's something to think about. Uh, so let's just put this on auto because I want to talk about a couple other things. So with Riverin, uh I think the main thing with him is bringing a lot of characters that have debuffs on your team, okay? Now that could definitely depend on your RNG, random number generator, of the summons that you've gotten and the, the characters that you've actually received in the game. So you have to work with what the game gives you, right? So you want to bring characters that have a lot of debuffs, you know, armor break works, uh, bleeds, poisons, uh, lower attack, uh, lower hit chance, um, even lower speed when the barrier is not up. This is important uh, because if the enemy, if, if the wyvern doesn't have any debuffs on him, he's going to hit your uh, single target, one of your single characters, single target, really hard and it's twice and that will make um, poison apply twice as well and that's for two turns that can actually do a lot of significant damage and probably wipe your team so main thing about this is bringing a lot of debuffs as you can preferably every single ch character should have a debuff uh, but I'm farming seven with only two characters that actually have debuffs um, but I want to talk about that and why I do that so uh, the characters that I've summoned in the game um, have been a lot of nature characters. So obviously, elemental advantage is important. I can't bring nature to uh, a fight like this because I will most likely wipe. Okay. Um, now, what's important is in the bottom right hand of your screen. Now, I know a lot of you have seen this and may not know the benefits of it or may have not even seen it, but in the lower right hand of your screen, you have uh, every champion. You can turn off them using your skills 
or not on auto. And auto is big important in this game because when you're farming, you don't want to manual every single thing uh, in this in this game, obviously. So uh, manual uh, auto is important. However, uh, say you uh, your character, your main character that you six starred first, doesn't have a lot of debuffs. Okay, He's, she or he is a nuker or whatever the case may be. Um, the bottom right hand of your screen is very important for that specific thing. So I have most of my great gear on Judge Kisei for obvious reasons, okay? Now her third skill and her second skill are both AoE and they don't apply any debuffs. They do skill decrease, uh, but that doesn't it doesn't matter on the Wyvern. Um, however, the AoE would be nice on this first wave of, you know, four creatures, but it's not really necessary. The, the creatures prior to the Wyvern aren't the issue, it's the Wyvern, okay? So what I do personally, since Kisei is by far my best character right now and have best gear, uh, what I am doing is I turned all of her skills off. Her first skill has an armor break, which is huge, and I want her to try to apply that as much as possible. If I have this, this is floor uh, stage seven of Wyvern. If I have her skills on, I wipe every single time, okay? When I turn the skills off, I have probably a 90%, 95% win rate on this team. Uh, the reason being is debuffs are the most important thing in Wyvern, okay? So I have, say just trying to apply that armor break as much as possible for one more increased damage with the armor break two to apply that debuff okay uh, so that's definitely important and a good strategy to have depending on your team comp okay um, I also bring assassin Cartuja, which is my other nat 4 L&D okay um, Kisei is obviously the five star yeah I'm sorry um, don't be jealous uh, but Cartuja has an armor break on his last skill and he also has a bleed on his first skill and he's using one of those skills every single time so that's huge uh, he's a very good character for Wyvern he's actually gonna be my next six star for multiple different reasons uh, but uh, mainly because he's cool he's awesome and he hits hard and his passive is awesome so um, I have Dean, okay D Dean Dean whatever um, and I'm using Angelica now Neither one of those have debuffs, which if I could switch out Angelica for a different healer that has some debuffs, I may do that. Um, or, I mean, I could bring in Elson for Dean, but I like uh, the immunity, I like the barriers, and I like the cleanse from Dean, attack buff, crit resistance, etc. So there's a lot of different reasons why I use this team. Ultimately, you kind of want a healer that has debuffs, like I said, and uh, a support that has some debuffs as well. But you can get around all of that uh, without having it, obviously. Um, I want to go into, when, when this run is over, I want to go into the stages of what you should be farming. Um, and depending on your gear and status and everything like that. Um, and I'll kind of start now. So s stage 7 is very... Um, that's stage seven is when you effectiveness really starts to matter okay um, and then after seven that's when it's a gear check all right so depending on where you are in the game um, that's kind of what you want to look for seven really really <laughs> effectiveness matters making sure that those debuffs land every single time okay uh, and then eight I can't complete eight right now um, Probably when I six star Cartuja, I should be able to because he's my front line. Um, and I have him build tanky, but his passive helps. But um, once I uh, once I am able to switch around some gear and six star him, I should be fine. Uh, but so stage eight is really a gear check. Stage seven is effectiveness. Where everyone should be farming, uh, if you can't auto seven and or eight or anything higher than that is stage six i'm going to show you why so stage six is a very important goal for you uh in my opinion 
Um, and I will sh because stage six is the only the first place that tier five gear drops. All right, um, stage five drops tier four. Okay, uh, but when you get to stage six, that's when uh, tier six, um, tier five, sorry, gear starts to drop. Now, once you get down below, below, below stage nine, uh, and you're able to get tier six gear, you should definitely start farming that. However. Uh, if you're like an early mid game, you know, wherever you want to consider yourself player, you want to start at least in stage six. And stage six is pretty easy. Um, you can kind of just nuke it through. I don't even need to bring Angelica. I can switch that out for another DPS with debuffs or whatever the case may be. Uh, Tierra, Shuri, whatever. Uh, but uh, you, can, you can pretty much farm stage six if you have four or five star characters with decent gear. All right. Um, so definitely start farming that. Uh, I, I farm stage 7 because it's a higher chance to drop the tier 5 gear, obviously. Uh, but the wyvern is very important because of speed, All right, the speed set. Speed and arena and a lot of other different places as well is is king. I mean, the, the faster you, if you take first turn or the faster you take turns, you're going to be doing more damage, more support to your team, more healing, etc. So uh, speed is important. And then you can, you know, the crit set and the hit set. These are three huge important pieces of gear early game anyway that you can use to progress in the game. So definitely go and farm Wyvern really as much as possible. So let's talk about team comps, okay? Uh, so team comps. What you really want, obviously, is a lot of debuffs, um, but you can't decrease the enemy's, um, you can't decrease the enemy's combat radius, whatever, but you can increase yours, all right? so. Obviously, with up, uh, the new update coming out, uh, you will. It just depends on the nerfs, but Tiara, Elson, you know, all all the big ones, Rickerus, they might not be able to be used uh, efficiently anyway, like they used to be. So, I mean, depending on what the changes are, you could maybe still use Tiara because she has lower hit chance, uh, lower defense, and combat readiness of X. You know, because we don't know what they're doing with that skill obviously it's going to get nerfed somewhat um but what also what you could do is uh bring in some alternates and i know tons of people have talked about alternates but i'm thinking about uh, re-gearing and building up shuri okay um shuri has a poison which will do multiple damage and it's a debuff so that's good uh he does decrease the enemy's combat readiness so that's not going to work on a wyvern but it's going to increase your teams as much as possible uh, every single time he attacks. So if you make him fast, 100% crit, your team is going to be taking more damage. So combat readiness for your team is great. Um, like I said, debuffs, uh, an attack buff, immunity or a cleanse because uh, the poisons can tick for a lot um, and they can stack if you don't get a debuff up. So uh, one of those things is good. A good decent healer. Uh, I have two barriers and a healer, so uh, I'm pretty. This is a pretty safe team. I could go for a more uh, dangerous team, I could say, uh, with a with a lower success rate, obviously. But uh, once I start getting my gear better and the free gear removal, which hopefully is all characters, uh, I should be able to fix my situation. So um, I am I am okay with that. So. Uh, those are just some uh, tidbits for Wyvern that I wanted to talk about and try to help you guys out. Um, hopefully this helps, and uh, I will check you guys in the next video. Peace.